Welcome back to Crypto Empire, where we dominate the crypto market. I am your host for this live stream. I am Connor from Crypto Empire, and boy, do we have a lot to talk about today. To everybody, all the Crypto Empire community members watching from around the world, I do want to welcome you to this live stream. Thank you for taking some time out of your Sunday to be here with the entire community as we dig into what exactly is going on in the crypto market. Because like I said, boy, oh boy, is it crazy right now? We did just experience the slowest week in the bear market so far, completely flat, sidelined across the board when it comes to price action. But that's because the market is waiting on major economic data. Next week, we have the inflation numbers coming out on Tuesday. And then we have the next interest rate hike, the FOMC meeting by the Federal Reserve coming out on Wednesday. So the market is waiting on that data. With that being said, I do want to welcome everybody to today's live stream. Big shout out to Reverend Flashback. Always here, always the first comment in the live chat saying, hi, Connor. Hope you have a great weekend. Thank you, Reverend Flashback. Right back at you. I hope you have an amazing weekend. Also, CR08 saying good morning from Australia. Primed and ready for some juicy alpha. Let's go, CR08. Good to see you here, my friend. We got Jamie L., and we got Glasshopper77. We also have Warthog Thunderbolt. What's going on, guys? And we got Labradoodle. We got Amstercam. Good to see you, Amstercam. And we got Elvis. We got Mr. Sellers Holmes. We got Ulrike saying hi, everybody. We got Dave. The whole gang is here. Let's get right into it with our crypto market overview. All right, big shout out to Rigoberto Chavez, as well as Andrea, as well as Coin Operated. Good to see all you guys in the live chat here. Taking a look at the market as it stands, Bitcoin trading at $17,100, Ethereum trading for $1,264. Let's go look at the chart real quick. And if we look at ETH, let's look at ETH on the weekly. Our weekly candle so far is red and it's a doji though right we're looking right here this little candle here completely red sideways really uneventful week same thing with bitcoin if we look at bitcoin real quick on our weekly price chart again really just not a whole lot let's go look at a cleaner chart here not a whole lot happening this week all right this is our weekly candle a little wick up, a little wick down, but for the most part, we are flat sideways. Not a lot to report on this week. Let's take a look at the gainers and losers on the day. Looking at the top gainers, a bunch of coins. We got ZigZag, that's on ZK Sync. That's that decentralized exchange up 239% on the day. Other than that, not a lot of very popular cryptocurrencies out here on the top gainers for the day. We got Serum making a bit of a dead cat bounce pump up 10.5%, right? Serum heavily involved with Alameda Research, SBF, FTX, uh, on Solana, decentralized exchange. So that thing is, you know, cooked, but up 10% on the day. And we also have Looks Rare as well as Comdex, Comdex and the Cosmos ecosystem, both up 10% on the day. Looking at the top losers, again, really not a lot of major coins in the top losers. Evmos down 10%. We also have Kava down 9%. Everdome down 7.5%, Osmosis, so the Cosmos ecosystem not really doing too hot uh, with its coins down on the day, but we're in the middle, we're at the depth, the absolute depth of the bear market right now, which is very important to understand. Now, before we get into all of our charts, all of our altcoin technical analysis, all of our relevant news and updates and data, I want to make it very clear that if you want to succeed in the cryptocurrency industry in the cryptocurrency market if you want to make money by buying and selling these coins it is imperative that you keep the focus when everybody else gives up right now 90 95 percent of people even have given up they don't check the prices of crypto anymore they're not keeping up to date their friends say hey check out this coin they're like oh, i don't care about crypto it's so dead that is the opposite of what you must be doing right now right now is when you got to get Dig your claws in, establish your ground, and keep on doing what you were doing in the bull market, essentially. Because if in the bull market, everybody's interested. Everybody's looking at the prices. Everybody's you know optimistic. 
We're in the depth of the bear market. Now is the time to be extremely optimistic about the future. Prices are at near the bottom, all right? We are at the time where if you have given up paying attention, and by the way, everybody who's watching the stream right now, credit to you because you have not thrown in the towel. You have kept your attention. You have kept your focus. You are doing the work that is needed to succeed for the next two, three years. Right right now is when we're going to place our bets for the next two, three years and then reap in those profits. But if you're one of the ones losing hope, losing optimism, feeling like this whole industry is just not going to go anywhere in the future, that is the wrong mindset to have, my friend. You got to double down, baby. This is it. All right. So with that out of the way, now that we have our mindset set and cleared and ready to go for this live stream, let's get into it with our Bitcoin technical analysis. Smash the like button, everybody, by the way. Smash it up, smash it up. Shout out to Jazzy saying, what's good, Crypto Empire fam? Good to see you, Emperor. What's going on? We also got the Patriot Matrix saying, hey, Connor, been a long time. Good to see you, the Patriot Matrix. What's going on? We got Linda. We got Michael, DGI Manor, saying, welcome back, Connor. Nice to see you once again. Hope you're doing just fine. Do you have a wonderful week? I had a good week, man. Didn't really look at the charts too much because, like I said, it was the slowest week in crypto so far. We also have Alla saying it was such a boring week. It was a very boring week. Patriot Matrix saying South Southern California. Yeah, the Southern California is a tough spot when it comes to those in in power, if you can say. And Adrian Kent. All right, guys, let's get into our Bitcoin technical analysis and go into what's going on here. Big shout out to Adrian Kent, by the way. So we already went over our weekly candle here. I mean, what a week, right? Crazy. Not. It was very uneventful this week. And that is shown here with our weekly candle, nothing happened. All right, the high of the weekly candle here was $17,417 and the low is $16,600. If we look at the monthly for the month of December, it's currently red, but still a doji, all right? Again, nothing has happened this month so far. We have started and we are exactly where we started, I should say, right? We're exactly where we started the month of December, 11 days ago now. The new year is right around the corner. But right now we have to focus on the moment, the present that we are in. So let's drop this down to some lower time frame charts and take a look at what's going on right now. So we did just experience a nice little scam pump on the Sunday. All right. Let's not forget about scam pump Sunday, everybody. It's still here. And we have a nice little tweezer top on the one hour. Nice little rejection. Right. A bunch of people, I assumed, went long here and they just got chopped up with this little rejection down. Usually not the best idea to open new positions on a Sunday afternoon because it's typically going to, you know, fake you out with a lot of head fakes. That's the scam pump Sunday that I do talk about quite a bit here on the channel. Weekend trading, especially in the low volume bear market, it's really not going to give you what you're hoping for. The odds are not really in your favor. And as traders, we want to play the game when the odds are in our favor. So it's very important to time out your trades. You don't want to be entering a trade at a time when the market is super low volume, dead. And we usually experience that type of manipulation on a Sunday. And we saw it play out here just within the past three hours. Okay. So definitely write that one down if you're brand new to trading. But if you've been with us for a while, you've definitely heard me say that before. So we are right where we started the month and where we started the week. Really uneventful. Now, if we drop this up to a four-hour chart, we still do have the range high supply zone up here at $17,500 up to 18 k 18200 if we really want to get precise with our technicals and our wicks, right, accounting for all the wicks over here. I do still expect this range high supply zone to get tested. This is the target on the long side, 17.5, but really anywhere in between, all right? And then we look for signs of a reversal and we place our bets on the short side. Very simple. So the plan is still really intact, still expecting this move up to the supply zone. But let's not forget with our economic calendar, here we see December 13th, that is on Tuesday. We do have the CPI coming in at 8.30 a.m. this Tuesday. That is the inflation numbers. What do we want to see for the inflation numbers? Well, in order for markets to push higher, we need the dollar to weaken. In order for the dollar to weaken, we need inflation to come down. All right, because if inflation goes higher, the dollar gets stronger because the Fed continues to raise interest rates. So here we can see the forecasted CPI numbers expected to be 
7.3% inflation on the month. Previous was 77 So if it comes higher than 7.3% on Tuesday, 8.30 a.m., not going to be bullish at all, right? We should expect a pretty harsh sell-off, but it's always very volatile on that day. So it's typically best, again, one of those situations where you don't want to have a position active in the market going into these major economic data releases. Typically better to wait until after to go ahead and start actively trading again. Now, if you look on the 14th of December, that is next Wednesday, that's the big FOMC day at 2 p.m. All right, it's expected to be a 50 basis point rate hike, all right? 0.5%, half a percentage point. If we get that, I would say that's pretty neutral. Not bad, not great. They're still raising rates. The cost to borrow is still going up. But if we do get another 75 basis point rate hike, it's going to be bad news for the bulls. Super, super bad news for the bulls if we get another 75 basis point rate hike. We'll see what happens. Big week coming up. And the markets are waiting for this data to be released to make their next move. So that's BTC. Our lower support levels are outlined here. 16.6K did hold up on this support test very well. Use it as a springboard to get right back up above 17K last week. That was really the only kind of move we had last week was this slight move down to $16,600. But all of our lower support levels are outlined here on the chart, and we will keep them there. Let's also take a look at some other metrics. Let's take a look at the dollar. All right, the US dollar index, right? We had the parabola up on the chart. And we, we've always said when these major base supports get breached, when the major base supports get broken, that is super, super bearish. And when the parabola broke, it did come back and it retested the breakdown. And then it's just been down only after that parabola broke. Now we are coming to some major support resistance flip areas from 105 down to 103. That's where the current dollar price actually is right here at 104.93. All right, so here, this is a major support level, plain and simple, right? I would not expect this to just violently break down and keep on going down, all right? I would expect at least some kind of bounce from these levels. Maybe we come back down to 103, retest this trend line, and then we start pushing up. But the dollar right now is at support, plain and simple, okay? It had a nice fall down. And during this entire fall down, usually we would see crypto and stock, stocks rallied quite well. But usually we would see crypto do well too when the dollar fell such a large you know, mark in the past few weeks. All of November into December, the dollar's been going down, but crypto's been sideways. Crypto has not been doing anything, largely thanks to Sam Bankman Fried and his little cartel over at FTX in cahoots with the government, right? We, they definitely have a large front of the blame for why crypto has not been performing too well with the dollar going down. But we can't cry over spilt milk. It's in the past. All we can do is prepare for the future and take action right here, right now in this present moment because all that matters is the present. Let me go ahead and catch up with the live chat, see what's going on. Andrea, have you seen the osmosis pump on Binance? Um, we'll look at that real quick. See Osmo on Binance. Whoa, what the heck happened here? Okay, well, that's quite odd. Not sure what caused this pump up to $12.50 with Osmo on Binance, but um, doesn't look natural. Looks like some kind of manipulation, you could call it, or something, but that doesn't just happen. Something happened there. Somebody did that. Interesting stuff. Let's see, Sniff saying, when I got into crypto, I only bought Bitcoin. Then I got into ETH and other altcoins. Looking back, I should have just bought Bitcoin and only Bitcoin. Yeah, well, you live and you learn, Sniff. You have another bull market to look forward to and play that one correctly. If you only want to buy Bitcoin, well, then stick to the plan. That's your plan came from your mind, your subconscious mind. So if you believe it, then put it into action, man. All for it. I respect it. Nelson saying, do you think this is a good time to buy Kadena? Well, we're in the depth of the bear market. Could it drop lower? Of course it could drop lower. But if we look on the, really the grand scale, the grand horizon, um, the bigger, larger outlook, the macro outlook, yeah, I would say it's a pretty good time to buy KDA. Let's go to a weekly chart here in this thing. And we want to see it on a different exchange so we get all the data. Let's look at it on Qcoin. 
So if we look at this thing on Qcoin, back in July of 2021, it was trading at 31 cents, pumped all the way up here to 27, $28. Okay, nice 8,700% return. Now it's been down only, and it did just come to this major weekly demand level and saw a nice little bounce from it. So yeah, this weekly demand level does look like a decent spot. You're below, you're, you're just at a dollar now, but if we come back into this demand zone, you're below a dollar, all time high is 28. If you think it's even gonna go half of that, back to 14, you're looking at a 14X, all right? So it's definitely not a bad time to be buying you know, your favorite altcoins. Could it go lower? Yes, it absolutely could go lower. We are still yet to see all the collateral damage from the FTX fallout. We got our guy Sam, supposed to be appearing in court um, next week, right? Tuesday and Wednesday, saying he's going to show up. He's he's tweeting, you know, I'm going to be there, guys. It's all good. He's he's gone on like two dozen interviews since he you know stole everybody's money, billions of dollars. At this point, it's just ridiculous. Like we've talked about in the past. This is a clown world reality. This stuff only happens in a clown world where we see no repercussions for SBF, Sam Bankman Fried. But anyway, we'll see what happens when he goes and testifies in court. See if he gets pinned for his wrongdoings or not. We'll see if justice does prevail. My bet is that justice is not going to prevail here and this guy's going to walk, walk away scot-free. But anyway, um, yeah, there's still going to be a lot of collateral damage from FTX. Still yet to see what is going to happen with Genesis that crypto lending platform, digital currency group, Grayscale, Coinbase maybe, we can see Coinbase over here. Uh, Coinbase trashes Tether's USDT asking clients to switch to USDC. As concerns about Tether's credibility grow, cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase has advised its users to switch to its own stablecoin, USDC. As a result, Coinbase is eliminating conversion costs for users who want to move to the trusted stablecoin. As part of a new campaign emphasizing the quality of reserve backing circles owned USDC coin. Kind of sketchy if you ask me. Kind of some red flags coming out of Coinbase. There's rumors that Tether had connections with Alameda and FTX. So if, if USDT turns out to be in hot water and for some reason is in, in, in some trouble, it's going to have major repercussions on the market going forward. So back to the original question. Is now a good time to buy Kadena? It's not the worst time it's also not potentially the best time because we could see another type of horrible um, sell-off with imagine if like tether goes down or coinbase goes down I know we're talking about what if hypothetical scenarios here but with what we've seen in the bear market so far how can we not even talk about these right these are these can happen we've seen them happen already and they can for sure happen again we are nowhere near out of the woods just yet so is now a good time to buy Kadena? It's an okay time, in my opinion. I think it could go lower, but still, from this current price, you have a 28x to the all-time high. Even if you just get half of the all-time high to $14, you still have a 14x. So it's a pretty decent time, I would say. Hope that answers your question, my friend. Nelson, Nelson Rio Frio, hope that answers your question. Woody in the building saying Woody made it sort of. He's driving and I'm typing in chat. <laughs> Woody, you are funny, my friend. Well, good to see that you made it to this Sunday's live stream. Thank you for showing your support here in the live chat. I really respect the dedication. I know you have a very busy day today with your family. So respect to you, Woody. Let's continue on. Catch up with this chat. Florent1980 saying, hi, Connor. Thanks so much for your videos on airdrops. Almost done with your optimism. Is it too late for Arbitrum in your opinion? I don't think it's too late. It's I think it's getting to that point where it's almost too late. Probably after the new year, it's going to be too late. So if you haven't watched my Arbitrum airdrop videos, definitely go ahead and do that. I'll make a little update too uh, because it's been a while since we talked about that. But I have enough videos where you'll be able to get started and, and secure some of the airdrop at least. Smash up that like button if you guys are enjoying the live stream so far. Big shout out to All Day Dre with us today in the live stream. Rigoberto saying, Connor, will most altcoins that have a good use case reach new all-time highs next bull run, or could they underperform due to how badly this bear market has been? Good question, Rigoberto. So not every coin with a good use case is going to make a new all-time high. That's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. A lot of these altcoins that have solid use cases possibly had vested tokens that have been getting released to early investors throughout this bear market. They're just waiting for the price to go higher so they can sell it on the open market. 
A lot of coins have bag holders from the last bull run. A lot of people were buying the top, right? Think of Thorchain, for example, it was $28 at one point. Let's go look at Thorchain Rune. You know, really solid coin. I think it will do well. But objectively, this thing was, if we zoom out a little bit, this thing was $21 at its peak. It's $1.39 now. You know, a bunch of people, this is just an example, by the way. I, I like Thorchain, but this is just an example where we have to understand that when Thorchain was up here at 21, a bunch of people were buying and buying in droves. Up here at 15, people buying. Up here at 12, people buying, 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 buying throughout the bull market. Guess what? They're all majorly underwater now. So what are they waiting for? They're waiting for the price to go up so they can sell it. You know, maybe they're buying more down here to double down on their bet. But for the most part, Thorchain is just one example, first one that popped into my head. But there are a ton of coins that have really solid use cases, but they have supply issues basically is what it comes down to. Bag holders, vested tokens getting released. So not every coin will make a new all-time high, even if it does have a solid use case. We could see it go up for sure. But the ones with the real solid use case that are actually you know solid tokenomics, those are the good ones. Those are the ones that are going to make new highs and do super, super well during that next bull run. As well as the new ones, right? The new ones that have a good use case that haven't experienced the last bull market and then the bear market. That's a full pump and dump cycle. We want to look for the new coins that haven't experienced a full pump and dump cycle because they simply don't have those supply issues like the bag holders, like the early investors getting their tokens over time, just waiting to sell in the open market. Let's see, Dog of Wall Street saying peak bottom not in yet. We might get a rebound though. Always ready to trade to both sides. Macro environment is still bad. You hit the nail on the head, Dog of Wall Street. I completely agree with you, right? I, I do still think we uh, we are going to test that 14K level on Bitcoin. And what does that mean for altcoins? Another washout. So I agree. Anna Maria saying hello. What's going on, Anna Maria? Dog of Wall Street saying recession is not fully priced in. I agree, it's not. And if we get that 75 basis point rate hike on Wednesday, man, oh man, will they have to price in that recession? It's going to be ugly. Rigoberto, I bet he don't go to jail. Yeah, I, same with me, Rigo. Uh, Anna Maria, what do I think about Osmo? I wouldn't check it, or I wouldn't touch it right now. I'm not sure what happened with it. Another community member already brought it up the stream. Um, in regards to this little wick we had, but uh, notice how it failed to break resistance, couldn't close above this $1.04 level. Really not the prettiest looking chart right now. Osmo is a great coin, great DeFi protocol on Cosmos, but this chart not great at the, at the moment. CRO8, hi Connor, just wondering, did you get all of your quests done on Optimism? Uh, no, I actually didn't finish them all yet. Not yet, CRO, not yet. Coin operated saying Max Kaiser says that USDC will fall before USDT. That makes sense, right? This is sketchy. When Coinbase puts out a, a mass broadcast saying sell all of your USDT to USDC, it's just a red flag. They're both stable coins. USDT came first. They've been working since they started, really, right? They haven't had any major D pegs. Tether's had a few close calls, you can say. But yeah, this is super sketchy by Coinbase. Honestly, it's a major red flag to me. I would not advise using Coinbase anymore. If you have any money in Coinbase, get it off. You should have already done that. You shouldn't have any of your coins on centralized exchanges. But this right here tells me that Coinbase is screwed, is a good way to put it. They are screwed. Uh, so we'll see if they go down. If they don't, cool. But if they do, uh, you heard it here for first. Smash up that like button. Shout out to Riley Hall saying, good to have you here, Connor. Thanks, Riley. Good to see you. Dog of Wall Street saying, most altcoins will have a tactical bounce in the upcoming weeks. Do we all agree? Yeah, I think so. We're due for a little relief rally for sure. What are you saying? Are you planning on making part two? I can definitely do that for the community, Woody. For sure I can do that. Mr. Sellers Holmes, favorite coins based on strictly tokenomics? Well, my favorite has been for years, Monero. If we look at Monero, circulating supply 
1.147 million coins, less than Bitcoin's circulating supply, right? Total supply, right? They have minor rewards. They're going to keep on re rewarding miners to secure the network. All right, so that's really not too much of a concern when you see the infinity next to the total supply. And when it comes to Monero, all right, it's all baked into the code how many coins get released. Uh, but when it comes to, you know, my favorites, XMR for sure. If we look at Monero versus Bitcoin, you know, I like it for the fundamental reasons, but the technicals are super sharp, super sharp technicals for Monero. I've been crushing Bitcoin. But really the main reason we should pay attention to something like Monero is because it gives us full power over our money. And they don't like that. That, may, that means that we should really like it. Right, Monero, thumbs up everybody. Smash up that like button if you agree. But anyway, if we look at this chart, Monero just steadily gaining on Bitcoin. No mercy, absolutely no mercy. If we look at the start of the year, let's drop a little line on January 1st, 2022 right here. Right here, start of the year. So from the low of this year to the current price, Monero is up 124% versus Bitcoin. It broke this downtrend line going back to 2017. That is a five year downtrend. I talked about this in a video a few months ago, but anyway, Monero broke a five year downtrend versus Bitcoin here, and it doesn't look like it's gonna stop anytime soon. So my favorite altcoin when it comes to, to answer your question, Mr. Tellers Holmes, favorite coin based off of tokenomics, as well as fundamentals, Monero for sure. I mean, Litecoin is also very solid. You guys know I'm a Litecoin bull too. Hard not to be. Litecoin also has been crushing Bitcoin. If we look at it from the low of this year to where it is now, it is up 150%, 149%. So doing even better than Monero. And if you look at where it's at on the chart, major level shown here with my dotted yellow line. All right, if we can get above this resistance, that's very promising here for LTC. But this looks like the point where we would see at least a little bit of a pullback. But if we see this Litecoin Bitcoin chart pump, that would really mean something. That would be you know, very, very bullish for Litecoin. But this, this is a point in the chart after a straight move up like this. This is a weekly price chart. This is a point where I would expect some kind of pullback before you know testing maybe this, this support level. And then we continue, we break that level on the second attempt. But yeah, Litecoin, another solid one. Uh, you know, Link is good. Just stick with the majors right now. Obviously, Bitcoin is great tokenomics, um, but that's not an altcoin. Anyways, we'll get more into that as we go through the stream. Victorio Jesus Molina Bermejo saying, what do you think about Rose, Oasis Rose? I'm a fan of it. I am a fan of Rose. I do think it can do well. Let's see if my... CoinGecko will cooperate with me. So rose down 92.5% from its all-time high. Currently at 4 cents, all-time high is 59.7 cents. I like rose, it's a good layer one, not high in the market cap, right? Its market cap right now is 226 million. Can easily, you know, turn into billions next bull run. First of all, let's look at it versus Bitcoin. Doing all right versus Bitcoin, especially this year. Actually, never mind. It's getting crushed versus Bitcoin this year. Here we can see in January, it was still hot from that bull market. So down 78% versus Bitcoin this year. But from the bottom, it is up 41%. Still pretty bad. And Rose, we're on a log scale so we can really get the big picture. Rose on the log, on the weekly chart, very close to a bottom. I mean, it's in the bottom demand zone, practically. It's tested it twice. It's right over it. Um, so yeah, Rose would be nice if we came back under four cents into this demand level, but I like Rose. I think it has the potential to do well. Fully diluted market cap is not great. It's over double of the of the actual market cap. So that is definitely a little bit of a concern. 
you can see half of the tokens are not yet in circulation, so it's an okay pick. Ala, what's your favorite exchange to cash out in the U.S.? I've used Coinbase in the past, and I've never had a problem with it. I, in terms of cashing out, yeah, Coinbase is what I've always used. They, they haven't given me any trouble, even with you know nice size cash outs. So I, I like Coinbase, but we'll see if that changes in the future. Anna Maria is saying that she entered Osmo at one dollar. I hope it's okay for you too. McNaz, I hope Coinbase doesn't go under. I don't have any funds in there, but I'm in New York, and the only exchanges that I can on ramp money with is Coinbase and Gemini. Yeah, that wouldn't be nice if they went down, I agree, but the way the cookie crumbles sometimes doesn't always go in our favor. And Jamie L bringing up Quant. Yeah, Quant is up there too, for sure. When it comes to utility cryptos, Quant and Chainlink are the main two you really should pay attention to. I think if you just paid attention to, like, these main ones, you'll do super well. Quant here on our daily price chart, down both on the month and the week. All right, red monthly, red weekly. Hasn't done too much this week at all. Tested 133, but got rejected just above the weekly open. That's actually been down only this week. So sideways choppy for Quant this week. But when it comes to potential, yes, absolutely. Quant has a very bright future because they are one of the main central bank digital currency coins and the world is quickly moving towards those central bank digital currencies for all nation states. So yes, it's horrible for citizens, but if you own the coin, you can make some money. So that's good. Still pretty bad, but hey, we gotta take our emotions out of investing sometimes and go where the money's at. And quant is that. Yeah, so yeah, quant is good. Thanks for bringing that up, Jamie L. The Patriot Matrix saying, I'm bullish on GMX, but then that's probably preaching to the choir. Yes, GMX, the hottest altcoin during the bear market for sure. Everybody waiting for a pullback on GMX. Breaking out to new all-time highs here. Currently $56. And uh, doesn't look like it wants to stop. We'll see if it can break this level and push higher. But yeah, I would like a pullback on this thing too. Thoughts on Sunday Swap? That's the Cardano exchange. When you say Sunday Swap, the only thing that pops into my mind is the whole fiasco when it was supposed to be released. And they were doing, if you stake to their note on Cardano, you got an airdrop or something like that. And it totally didn't work out and it got delayed like months. Um, so not good thoughts on Sunday Swap. I haven't had any positive experiences with it. I wouldn't buy it. Certainly would not buy it or trade it. All right, let's go ahead and move on with this live stream today. And let's get into our Twitter wisdom, first of all. So first of all, we'll talk about this tweet from Unusual Whale saying, Breaking, Sam Bankman Fried of FTX has said he hopes to start a new business to make enough money to pay back victims of the FTX collapse. I mean, what are, we, what, what are you supposed to say to that? It's just like, throw this guy in the trash can already, lock him up. What the heck is this garbage? This is clown world. Absolute clown. I mean, really no wisdom to be shared here other than the fact that um, you can't trust mainstream media whatsoever. And that's our Twitter wisdom for the day, guys. Also, Sam paid the block, which is a cryptocurrency news site. He gave the CEO, I believe, $15 million dollars. And the CEO didn't tell anybody, but he just paid him off to write positive stuff about FTX. So it just gets worse and worse, really, all the dirt that's being uncovered. It's just a really bad look for media and crypto. Anybody that was positive about you know, Sam repetitively speaking highly of him, they were paid off is what it comes down to. 
And that goes for most of the clowns we see on YouTube, right? No offense to other creators out there putting in work and making videos. But when I look at people's channels and I see them in the depth of the bear market talking about, you know, random coins that they're brand new, they're, you know, nobody's ever heard of them. And they don't announce that it's a paid advertisement on their video. You just lose all credibility, right? So I have nothing against hard work. I have nothing against producing content. But you have to announce if you get paid to talk about something. Um, and a lot of these people don't, which is not good. Oh, talking about Kevin O'Leary, Allah. So here we go. Kevin O'Leary lost $15 million. He was paid to be FTX's spokesperson. Shocker. Absolute shocker here. Kevin O'Leary, a.k.a. Mr. Wonderful, self-proclaimed, obviously. I don't think anybody else in the world would actually call him Mr. Wonderful and be serious, right? If I walked up, walked up to him and called him Mr. Wonderful, I would be strikingly sarcastic because that's the opposite of, um, he's the opposite of that. But anyway, he got paid $15 million and we can read here that he put $9.7 million into crypto. It's all at zero. Um, my account got scraped a couple of weeks ago. Everything is gone. So, it just continues to amuse us, really. Like, what is this? 15 mil to you, 10 mil to you. Oh, we'll give 100 mil to you. You're, you know, CNBC. We'll give 100 mil, no problem. Talk highly of us. That's all your money, by the way, too. I didn't put any money into FTX. I didn't lose anything in that crash. But normal, everyday people deposit money into their platform to buy crypto. And, and this guy goes and gives it to Mr. Wonderful and um, the block and everybody else. So yeah, we'll see what happens when he testifies in court. I haven't even been keeping up with the story. It's not worth the time or energy to keep up with. He's doing a new interview every single day at Sam Bankman Fried. What more details can we get out of him at this point? We know it's all a scam, we know it's all a cover up. So at this point, it's just a joke altogether. Anyways, that's our Twitter wisdom for this live stream. Hope you guys did enjoy that segment. Let's see, Jamie saying, you see the Charles H. Vid doing the round saying he heard rumor of XRP settlement on 15th, reckon he's just trolling XRP army. I did not see that video, Jamie L. I did not see that video. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if XRP and Ripple pays off the media too big time to only speak highly about them. Right, you have to assume that at this point. Morel Orel saying his whole persona is a greedy rich guy who doesn't care about anyone. Yeah, I would say that. When Luna going to a dollar? Not sure. Patriot Matrix. Yes. Good point, Patriot Matrix. Um, let's go ahead and move on. So one thing that's very popular right now is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is going to have a huge impact on our lives going forward. That's pretty obvious. I think we know, we can all agree on it. But we're in the very early stages of it. And what's been floating around Twitter and the interwebs is OpenAI. Right? This is OpenAI.com. And it wasn't working earlier. I'm saying I might need to wait. Let's see if it works now. All right, I'm not going to log into the middle of the stream. Basically, it's artificial intelligence, and it will write things that you want it to write for it. And it's very good. It's strikingly good. Got a little lime crow. But with all of this artificial intelligence buzz, we have seen some of the AI coins make some noise recently. One of them is FET. As you guys know, FET, one of my um, you know, favorite altcoins throughout the last bull market and really during the bear market, it, it came all the way down here to 5.2 cents. I'm still bullish on this thing. I still think it can make new all-time highs past a dollar over here, dollar ten. But it did get beaten up pretty badly, this bull market. And very interesting to see this little deviation here in the daily price chart. We had this sideways range for a better part of around five, six months. We broke down through the range. Okay, we lost it. But notice, this is a 
this is designed to make you sell by the way right when we break down through a range people think it's just going to keep on going lower they sell then this happens so many times we just see a monster pump out this is a deviation so we saw FET go ahead and have a nice 30 40 percent pump um, well from that bottom it was 116 percent right depending on where you take it from uh, so yeah FET crushed it with this little pump here but still down massively currently below 10 cents below 10 is a pretty decent entry point still think it could come lower but artificial intelligence making some noise here another one is VXV vector space and this thing is just totally down in the dumps this thing is a super low market cap which makes it a little bit enticing FET has a high a much higher market cap this thing has an 11.9 million dollar market cap currently down 98% from its high at $19.19. All right, this is another artificial intelligence cryptocurrency. It's got a very wise, uh, smart team from the research that I've done. A bunch of like PhD guys and stuff like that all leading this project. Chart looks horrible, but at some point, you know, we want to see some kind of bottom out Got a little bit of some weekly bullish divergence here. So VXV added to the artificial intelligence list with FET. When it comes to market cap and potential, you know, this thing can make, make some noise. If this thing has a move to its all-time high is $19.19. .19. If it gets back up there, it's a huge gain. But he, imagine it goes to 30, that's 100 x So don't get your hopes up too high. Don't bet the farm on it, but VXV solid AI pick. And then another one is Singularity, AGIX. Again, a lower market cap than FET. Still like FET the best out of all of these. I own a ton of FET, disclaimer. I have owned a ton of FET for you know a long time now. But anyway, Singularity market cap 59.2 million down currently 94 percent from its all-time high its all-time high did happen in 2018 almost five years ago so if we look at this chart these are fundamental picks by the way not necessarily short-term trades if we look at this chart here agix this is a pretty encouraging this is a weekly chart you know this is something that we want to see this is just choppy 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 down here not really going anywhere that's that's a pretty good sign for hopefully some kind of bottom can definitely come back down to to the threes the three cent area retest that but agix another artificial intelligence pick after fet and after vxv vector space ai but I'm excited. I definitely won't be taking the brain chip. I don't advise anybody watching this live stream to ever take a, a brain chip, right? Elon Musk Neuralink, artificial intelligence. They want you connected to a computer. Think about it for a second. Is that really a good idea? Oh, you'll be able to do so much stuff. You're not human anymore at that point, right? So just think about it for a second. Part of what makes life so beautiful is being a human being. And if you get that brain chip, you are no longer a human. So I would not advise that when it does start rolling out, which will be pretty soon. We're going to see the world turn artificially intelligent very quickly. All I'm doing to prepare for it is buying FET. All right, so that's my plan. Nelson saying, do you have any positions in flux? I don't have any positions in flux. No, sir. Fett had a nice run. Answer Cam saying, Connor, why do you think something like Fett will have no trouble making all-time highs again versus others? You talk about struggling to do that because of bag holder resistance. So Fett definitely has bag holder resistance, but that goes back to a question that I believe Rigoberto asked earlier in the stream was, what are the coins with solid fundamentals going to do? And not all of them are solid tokenomics and fundamentals. You know, not all these coins will reach new all-time highs. What I I've done a lot of a lot of research on Fed. 
but I've read a lot of stuff, white papers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Connected all the dots. It has a very high chance of being used in people's everyday life in the future with the kind of personal assistant bot that everybody's going to have. So something like Fed, I can see it being used on a massive global scale. And at that, obviously, it's speculation. Everything on the channel is speculation here. Nothing is financial advice. But if FET is used in people's everyday lives every single day, that can only be a good thing for the value accrual of the token. So that's why I have such strong conviction in FET. It's because I've done all of my research and I've connected all of the dots. I see where artificial intelligence is taking humanity and I want to be invested in it somehow. So I'm placing my bet with FET. We'll see how it plays out. Could I be wrong? Yes, absolutely, I could. But that answer, that should answer your question, answer Kim. So Rohit asking to check out Ethereum. Let's go check out ETH. So ETH, red week, red month, hasn't done anything Main level over here, overhead resistance is at 1330. 1350 is the start of our, whoops, 1350 is the start of our range high supply zone level. Okay, so again, same kind of scenario as Bitcoin. I expect it to get up and at least test these levels. 1330, 1356 overhead. Below we have 1240, 1220. And then we get into the 1219 or 1194 down here is this demand level. So really choppy sideways, didn't do anything for the past week. Not a lot of movement. Where does it go from here immediately? Look, it's anybody's best guess. The market is waiting for Tuesday and Wednesday next week. All moves before that are just to keep traders on edge, keep them guessing. You know, give people some action so they can hit their dopamine needs. But I'm not expecting any major movement until, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday when we have these these data release numbers come in and we can make our bet then. But for now, it's not directional. This was the most boring, uninteresting week in crypto in the bear market so far this year, so... And Labradoodle asking for Kava. So let's get into this right now. A few altcoins are showing me some very interesting things. Kava is one of them. Kava here on the four hour, depending on how you want to draw this. I have it drawn in a symmetrical triangle here. The main thing to note is these four bottoms coming in. Okay, support holding every single time. RSI getting stronger on every single one. All right, this is very good for the bulls here. Showing lots of strength. Holding support every time. Now, like I was saying, depending on how you want to draw it, I have this line here as a triangle, but we can get rid of that and we can do something like this where we can make it more of a wedge or a pennant type of thing. It would really be an ascending triangle if we made it like this because it's longer than three weeks. But Kava's still holding strong. A few altcoins look similar here. I'm gonna leave my chart how it was, but a few altcoins do look similar, similar here. This is bullish, by the way. Uh, it's above the monthly open, right at the monthly open. But uh, I like Kava to go higher. To me, this is due to test $1.31 over here. So I can see this going on a relief rally out of here. I've been watching Kava. Another thing, let me make sure you guys can see this properly. So if I switch my head cam and we go to a daily chart, notice with Kava, not a lot of other altcoins have this, but notice with Kava, the volume. All right over here, over here back in May of this year when Luna collapsed and we had the first crypto contagion, we had a lot of elevated volume. Then it dropped off 
for a while, from really June until October, this thing was dead quiet on the volume. Now look at this, recently after we had FTX fall out, Kava dropped from $1.40 down to 80 cents. But notice, after this huge drop, look at the entire volume profile. This thing's being bought and sold. This thing's being bought and sold in a lot of other altcoins on the market. Something is going on with this elevated volume. This is a leading indicator. All right, volume is the best leading indicator there is. So that's telling us something's going on here. Objectively, if we look at the bars, recently there are a lot more green than red, so that means that the bulls are in control here. RSI has bullish divergence in this symmetrical triangle. You can call it an ascending triangle. I'm bullish on Kava. I will look to trade it, but I'm going to follow my trading plan rules, and I'm not going to enter a trade first of all on this Sunday and also not right before CPI and FOMC. So I gotta, I gotta exercise my patience a little bit, but I do like the way the Kava chart looks. And we would like to see it hold above 88 cents here, where we started the month. If we go below, a good trigger, right? let's say we drop below this, a good trigger would be to wait until we're back above the monthly open to get long. So keep on watching that. A few other coins that look similar, have similar market structure. One of them is HBAR right now. Okay, depending on how you draw your lines, we can draw it like this if we want to. A thousand ways to skin the cat. But HBAR, similar type of chart, right? Multiple bottoms, one, two, three, four. Check this, stronger on every bottom. Right, elevated. Last one, yeah, still holding the line, not bad. Uh, showing a little more weakness than the other two bottoms. But anyways, H bar also has a similar structure to Kava here. And this volume profile on H bar is interesting. Okay, notice how it's super low. All right, what we wanna see is we wanna see a breakout and we want to see this go up like these bars here, okay? But anyways, H bar, similar market structure here to Kava. It looks pretty good to me. Right, so I, I'll continue to watch this. I'll continue to monitor this. Monitor this. I will let my Discord know when I'm going to trade it myself. But for sure, H bar on the watch list here for a nice breakout uh, to the upside above five cents. But again, the market is waiting for this week's economic data. Another one with another similar market structure is VRA Verocity. If we look at VRA here, similar ascending price action. This one has three bottoms on it. One, two, three. And not the best, not the worst profile here. Um, regardless, this thing is wedging. It's getting to the apex over here. We want to see this trend line hold. If we break the trend line, then the pattern won't exactly play out. But with something like this, VRA just moves out of nowhere. If we go to the daily chart and we look at these daily candles, this should put a smile on your face if you ask me. If we look at the past 9, 10 daily candles here, starting from December 2nd, right here to the 11th, the past 9 days, you know, these candles have not done anything. This thing's completely dead. Volume super low. This leads to an explosion after. This leads to a quick turnaround. Okay, so VRA, another one you should have on your watch list, ready to trade it, because this thing is showing signs of potential explosions here in the near future. And I'm not saying it's the bottom, the absolute bottom, but you know, look at look at this pump here, this pump, 73%, this one here, another bear market bounce, 27%. So there's there's money on the table here to be made. 
but you need to be patient and strike at the right moment. But VRA, I like the market structure here. Another good one. Let's keep it moving. What else looks similar to these? Cardano, ADA, same type of thing. So ADA, depending on how you want to draw your lines. Right, I have this descending wedge. Thomas Breon saying, hi Connor, what's up Thomas, how are you? But anyways, I have this descending wedge on my chart did break, did come back, retest this demand zone, is holding right now, this little rally or drop base rally demand level here, it's holding right now, um, this Sunday is crazy low volume, so I'm not really taking this price action to account too seriously Saturday and Sunday here, but back to my point, if we clean this up, and we can put a horizontal line here, like so. And we can draw it like this. Again, very similar looking market structure. Two Kava, two H bar, two VRA. One, two, three ascending. Stronger, stronger, stronger. So Cardano, also this volume tells me an, an explosion is coming soon. Volume dropping off of a cliff in this consolidation. When it breaks out, we're gonna see the volume elevate and that will confirm the breakout. So ADA, I'm watching for it. Uh, one that played out recently was EGLD Elrond. Finally gave us the pump after waiting forever. But EGLD, you know, similar type of structure I was waiting on this trend line break for EGLD for the trade. And it finally did give it to us. Um, but you know, another type of thing where you just let the TA do what it needs to do and you need to be patient and wait for it to play out, right? This thing trolled us for like days before finally breaking out. Um, but this is just an example of you know, finally getting a pump after waiting forever. Anyways, back to the subject at hand. Another chart that looks similar to Kava, Cardano, um, H bar, VRA, is Engine ENJ. So ENJ here, super similar looking to you know all the charts we just looked at, Elrond included, with this nice descending neckline. Right, this nice descending neckline here. Okay, price continuing to accumulate and ascend higher. Stronger, stronger, stronger on the RSI. All good there. So, ENJ, another one should be on your watch list. Should give us a nice little pump here. Uh, we really want to see it. We drop this we really want to see it get back above obviously the weekly and the monthly opens especially the monthly open higher the time frame the more reliable the technical analysis but ENJ added to your watch list it is on breakout alert watch right I like the structure I like what it's given us but again we have the big economic days next week so we have to wait for those Tintin saying the entire forecast for 2023 is negative. Yeah, I would say things will start turning around maybe September next year. Going to be a while, friends. Going to be a while. We got a long time to wait for that next bull run, folks. Long time. It's going to be a good time, though, right here at Crypto Empire, where we dominate the crypto market. If you are new here, be sure to smash that subscribe button down below and turn on all the notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. Continuing on with the live stream, let's take a live look at Avalanche AVAX. AVAX. Danil saying, AVAX broke trend line on a four hour to the downside. What do you think about shorting it? It did break that little trend line on the four hour, huh? If we draw a line like this,
Yeah, I could see, I don't know how low it's going to go. Your, your risk to reward isn't going to be great here. You know, we have a potential 1 to 2.4% move on the table. I'm not sure it's going to be a total breakdown here. Uh, I would see it coming back down to the $13 level. Right now it's at 1330. Um so really quick note you know we want to look for setups like this to short obviously we're talking hindsight again but when we have something like this where we have continuous pushes higher 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 and of course we want to match it up with other things like supply zones right we look to the left and we try to make sure that there's you know some liquidity in the area to short also things like the RSI we want to see it get weaker and weaker and here in AVEX yeah I mean it did slightly have it where it got weaker um, but you know we want to look for shorts when the the odds are really in our favor we want to play the house right we don't want to be the sucker who walks into the casino and plays a hand of blackjack when the odds are heavily against you we want to put the odds in our favor to win. So here on AVAX, you know, the risk to reward is is not really there for me um, to short it. It's a little late, in my opinion. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. You know, watch it come back down to 11, but I wouldn't touch it for now, personally. Seeing some weekend chop and the, the monthly open is here at 13. Expect that to, to act as support so I wouldn't short it to answer your question. Let me catch up with this live chat here. Ala, is there an easy way to check daily users slash transactions of projects like FET? Well, you can go to their explorer. Go to their page on CoinGecko Explorers. Just click on it here. It will take you to their block explorer. Be nice if it would load. It's not loading. There it is. So here you can see every transaction come through. And we want to see the general numbers here. Like the, the graphs. I haven't really been on this block explorer in a while. So not too positive on how to navigate this. But we should be able to get some main overview graphs of things such as you know the network growth the users etc etc daily transactions over time there is a way to, to plot that as a graph so it's possible for sure Andrea, Connor, can you check out Mute again? Tokenomics are amazing in Mainnet going live in February. You can look at it. So Mute, not on any major exchange. So you'd have to go to Dex Tools for that. Man, it is hot in my office today. They got the heat pumping in here. So, mute. Go to a daily chart. This is only on Uniswap, by the way. some action since October and doesn't look 
great to me. But it is interesting because it did come out of this multiple month sideways basing. You know, it broke out on volume, came back down, made a higher low, right? A good approach would be if you're looking to get long to just simply wait for this trend line break confirmation, right? Wait for this trend line to break. And then if you wanna be extra careful, you wait for the retest on the low selling volume. Very important to read that volume correctly. You wanna see a retest on low selling volume, lower than the buying volume to break out. And then you wait for that move. Um, but this chart, being that it's only on Uniswap, I wouldn't actively trade it, right? I would only look to, if I wanted to buy this coin, I would look to buy it and, and hold it for a while. I wouldn't look to really actively trade it on Uniswap. But that's mute. Hope that helps. Andrea. Yusuf saying, at this point, I don't care where it decides to go. I'd rather have more volatility because this is boring, to be honest. Well said, Yusuf. I'm in the same exact camp. This market is like watching paint dry on the wall. Extremely boring. Just give me some volatility. I'm ready, coach. Throw me in. Waiting for it patiently. Vajra asking for Seattle. Is that a dog coin? Seattle. The heck is this thing? looks fancy okay it's not a dog coin cool I think you ask me about this all the time Vajra all right let's see all right we're gonna have to take a look at this one right here on our trusty Dex tools Sayato, what's going on? What's cooking? All right. Here on our daily price chart, showing some promising signs. At resistance, some nice elevated volume going into it. Could potentially break here. So I would be watching for a break. It's right there on the spot. So if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen right now. Again, you can wait for the breakout and the retest on low selling volume for an extra confirmation. But you know, based off of what this chart is showing us right now, it wants to at least try and get through this resistance here so it could offer some decent upside if it can actually break through where may it go one potential level here at 3.07 cents another one at 4 cents and another at five cents pretty easy huh that's Sayato Patriot matrix GMX at $57 a couple minutes ago back down to 5678 itching for a breakout potentially or it could be one of these nice um, One of these nice troll pumps. We see it all the time, right? A lot of traders are breakout traders. A lot of traders are counter breakout traders where they wait for price to break the high. They look for some type of bearish divergence. They look for it in a supply level at a big resistance level and they'll short it 
And a lot of times they'll be very successful doing that. All right, so whenever price is at these all-time high levels in a bear market, obviously GMX is a bit of an exception being on how well it's been doing. But you do need to exercise a little bit of caution when something's at, a, at an all-time high in its bear market and it has a weakening market structure, losing momentum. Right, pretty much equal highs here, but losing strength. So I wouldn't play a breakout. I would play a short if anything. I want to keep that risk super small. This is five four point five percent. You know, you got a 2.4 to 1 if you trade it down to $50.86. Not the best, not the worst. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't long this thing for an all-time high breakout right now. It's not there. What I'm seeing, it's not there. But that's GMX. Jazzy saying, what's up, Connor? Can you please check out Moonbeam? I absolutely can, Jazzy. Let's check it out. So some pretty harsh rejection, rejections from the... 40 cent levels price really struggling to get above you know 45 46 really 43 and hold it yeah so I mean listen this thing came down to 31 cents you guys heard me talking about it up here at a dollar thirty, saying it was going to come down here to thirty-one. Has it bottomed out officially for the bear market? If I was a betting man, I would say no, it has not. So, is it a good time to buy? Yes, forty cents objectively is a lot better than two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, people were buying up here at nine, ten dollars. So 40 cents is a better time to buy than that. But could we potentially come down into the 20s? Yes, I do think we could potentially do that. When will that happen? Can't give you an exact date or time. Now from here, it is holding higher ground. So... I wouldn't trade this actively, I would watch it. Right, the plan is only to buy spot and then sell it in a few years when it's 10 to $20 hopefully, hopefully more. But um, it looks like it kind of wants to break. NGL, it does look like it wants to push above this. So kind of a funky looking chart but I do think over the next like I said earlier in the stream you know this this could be a brutal time until potentially quarter three next year so a lot of time still a lot of time still Oliver hey would you please check out phantom would be super nice thank you Oh, I can do that for sure. Coin Operator said, It would be cool to see you do a collaborate video with Forrest from Crypto Stackers. He's all about technicals too. That would be cool. I was talking to one of my accomplices, one of my mates, as you guys call it in the UK. And he was saying I should do more interviews, more collaborations. It would be good for my channel, good for my brand, and I agree, it would. It would be good to do some more collaboration. So 
Maybe I will hit up Forrest from Crypto Stackers. I do know who he is. I, I know his channel. I'm actually subscribed to his channel. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll get him on. Let's take a look at Phantom. So FTM. Was doing well. As you can see, I had this little short lined up. And it played out a little 9.6% move. Sniper senses were tingling there. How did I know I was potentially going to do that? Divergence. Price kept on coming back up to the top here at 26 cents. Just kept on getting weaker and weaker and weaker so what do you do when it gets weaker and weaker and weaker and it keeps on testing the same exact resistance level you short the hell out of it all right so uh, but that was last week so let's focus on the present now what is it doing below both both the monthly and the weekly all right so we got a red week and a red month so far on FTM trend is right now the trend is sideways okay the trend was up with price making continuous higher highs and higher lows but now we're sideways oh man all that sparkling water um It looks like it's due for a further correction to the downside. Plain and simple. What do we got? We got a little breakdown, a little retest, right? We broke down through this trend line. We come back up and we retest the trend line. Can't reclaim the trend line, so what does it do? It goes down. So that's what I would be looking at for FTM. Yeah, simple. Not a strong chart. Not a strong chart. Broke the line, retesting the line, failed to get above the line. That's a short. Tintin saying, Uh, Comdex is looking bullish in the bear market. Airdrop is in and apps launching. Good day, Connor. Yes, CMDX making moves out here. Low market cap. 9.5 mil. I like that. Available on Osmo and Juno. Check it out for yourself, folks. If you were staking Adam. Osmo providing liquidity on osmosis You should be eligible. I think you might have had to stay comdex too, right? They airdropped it to the Adam stakers Osmo stakers And then you had the option to stake it or sell it so Tintin why don't I make a video about it and we will talk about it after But yeah, I appreciate you always showing up to the stream Let's see. Last time you covered XCAD, still didn't break downward sloping resistance on my watch list. We'll look at XCAD real quick again. Remember, guys, big week next week with FOMC and CPI back to back days. Don't expect a lot of movement before then. XCAD here. Okay, what do we have drawn? This is a nice chart. This is, this is a little optimism here. Yeah, should be on your watch list here, All right? To break this downward sloping resistance. Keep watching. What you can do if you want, put like a line here. You can right click on it. 
uh, right click on the line you can add an alert on the horizontal line when it crosses notify on app so it shows right on your phone screen and you know when it's breaking out but yeah this should be on your watch list for a breakout for sure Tintin says, Connor, do you know Edgeware? Community-driven smart contract platform on Polkadot. Market cap 3.5 million. Huge upside if it survives the bear market. I just topped up. High risk, high reward. No, I don't. Don't know Edgeware. Where can you buy? All right, it's on Qcoin. $3.2 million market cap. I like that. We look at a weekly price chart yeah I mean the big thing is you know if it survives the bear market which it very well could do but it's not looking too hot right now except for the fact that it's in a weekly descending wedge Right, that's the only kind of positive we can make of this chart. We'll just hide the fact that it's making lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, yada, 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 yada. We'll just ignore that for the time being. It's in a descending wedge. It looks super good. <laughs> um, but no, I haven't heard of this one. I need to do some fundamental analysis on it. In terms of price action, it is down from its high 99.2%. All right, so you're not buying the top, folks. I need to do my own research on this before I can say, you know, I really like its fundamentals, etc. But Tintin's a sharp guy. Tintin knows what he's talking about. So thanks for bringing it to our attention, Tintin. Flat. Yeah, this thing is, it's dead for the time being, but that's when you're supposed to buy. Like I said at the beginning of the live stream, if you're not putting your attention into crypto now you are going to be putting your attention into it when bitcoin's making its breakout past you know 25 30k and you're gonna you're gonna come to my live stream here and you're gonna be like connor should i buy bitcoin now when it's 30k instead of 17 and i'd be like where were you two months three months five months ago when i was saying you should be paying attention at the most boring dull time in the bear market Right, this is the mo this is this is it, folks. This is the depth. The depth of the bear. We're here. So certainly a good time to be buying uh high speculation low caps, right? Because they're down ninety nine percent from their highs, market cap is ultra thin. Won't take a lot of money to change it around. So Edgeware, check it out. Rohit asking for ETH again. We already looked at it, Rohit. Rewind the stream. Osage Equam saying, Season's greeting to Connor and everyone present. Appreciate that. Happy holidays. Hope you are cheerful and glee this holiday season. McRea, what's your opinion on Kusama? Can you take a look at it? We certainly can. Shout out to Space Boy and Kitty tuning into the live stream all the way from Brisbane, Australia. Now let's take a look at Kusama. So KSM if you guys recall, we were watching it from this trend line break back here at the end of November. That did play out. Now it's going sideways in consolidation. Call it a bit of a flag, but one thing to note, one thing to note here, folks, is we do have this trend line going all the way back to 
the all-time highs at $500 back in November. Okay, and we are currently, I mean, we've been above this a few times, right? But as it stands now, we are above that line. Okay, we're above the trend line. And we're above the weekly and the monthly open. Two good signs there, slightly above. And in a bull flag. Okay, so KSM has taken off, while a lot of, a lot of other altcoins have not yet taken off, which is a good sign to see. Now, if we were to play this flag pull, and we're going to say we're going to trade the bull flag, some people for the flag pull would take this wick into account. I'm just going to take the to the candle bodies here. For me, it works better. But if we do see this flag play out exactly to my level at 3690 is where it's going to go. Okay, so we want to really ensure that 2865 holds down here. If we see, I mean, that's really the low, but the main support here is going to be... It's going to be here at 29.20. That's our main support. We really want to see that low uh, hold. But yeah, this is bullish, right? We've been watching this from this trend line breakout. Gave us a nice strong pump. Now we're in that sideways consolidation before possibly the next leg up. But this is one of the better looking charts on the market. Most charts don't look like Kusama. Kusama broke its range the most right now. It's one of the strongest. All right, so watch that bull flag. Bias Raul says, Hi, have you heard about Pi Network Crypto? I've heard about Pi Network because I believe a bunch of people would comment on my videos make bot accounts saying check out Pi Network. So I have no interest in Pi Network. But anyway, hope that answers your question about Kusama. Amsterdam says, thoughts on Cody working on DJED stablecoin for Cardano? Yes, it's, I like Cody. Um, it's been working on that stablecoin for Cardano for like, I don't know, two years now or something. Uh, this thing, if you look at its chart, looking pretty lackadaisical. Yeah, looking pretty lackadaisical here on this chart. Looks like it's due to pump. Right, this is another kind of deviation scenario where we range for six months, we break down through, and we just want to wait for the pop to get back above seven and a half cents, and it should at least come back to the, the high of this of this range at 13, 14 cents. So a lot of potential upside here. You know, we're talking 70%. But yeah, to me, this looks like it's a deviation and it should get back into the range. Crypto Panda, Vajra says, thanks, Connor. No problem, Vajra. Crypto Panda says, good evening. Could you look at ALBT, please? I suppose we could. I think this one got hacked a few weeks ago. Alliance block. think let me guys know if you can hear me or if I'm cutting out a little bit you guys hear me let me know in the live chat all right cool thank you answer cam anyway LBT in an interesting spot here again range lows broke through this is a deviation here. 
went back, tested range high. Look where we are now, right below, back above. We need to see this hold as support. Really in a tight spot here. If this does hold, expect you know back up to the range high. Uh, simple. But trade the ranges. This thing's in a range. Yeah, you want to see that hold. But yeah, when it, I'm pretty sure this thing got hacked for a few million. I don't know. I, I wouldn't trade it. Too many other coins to trade. Tintin says, I feel these parachain auction scams and waste of time too. A lot of money and energy has been wasted in it. Only projects with VC money could get a parachain. Yeah, that was uh, sketchy. That's why Cosmos is bullish. You don't need to have VCs to launch a chain on Cosmos. I agree. That's definitely one perk, one plus, one pro in the Cosmos ecosystem. McNett says, Connor, do you think Matic and Adam have bought him for this bear market? No. No, 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 no. I don't think so. Matt says, do you still hold PokeSwap? Oh, yeah, I do, Matt. Still holding it. Worth nothing. Yeah, Matic and Adam, no, nah, I don't think they bombed out. Look, if we get another major type of thing, event to happen... Bottom right now, it's pretty low, right? 31 cents is pretty low, but that doesn't mean it can't break it. It's held up a lot stronger than a lot of these other coins here. Uh, I still have that base support at Adam at $6 too, but I, I, I think it's too early to call a bottom, personally speaking. I think it is well too early. We'll see what happens on Wednesday. You know, if we get the 50% basis point rate or 50 basis point rate hike, that's a little bit of optimism. But uh, uh, let's see, Matt says, all right, ten ten, see you later, my friend. But yeah, I don't. I think it's too early to start calling bottoms, personally. Matic here. Super dull week. Didn't go anywhere. Losing levels here. Looks like it wants to calm down. But again, it's a Sunday, Sunday evening. Futures markers are about to open. You know, unless you're a full on, like you need to be trading for some weird psychological reason. It's really not the best time to be in the market. So let's just watch and observe. We have a huge week, right? This week is going to dictate a lot and there's going to be volatility to trade. These are snail moves right now. But answer, to answer the question, no, I don't think they have bottomed. Uh, Amster can. For me, it looks like a short, short term. Do you agree? ever so slight. What I'd like to see, I'd like to see one more, I'd like to see one more of these. Right into my levels at 490. This could be the top for sure, but I, I, I'd like to see one more pump with a weakening RSI into my supply levels. That would make me feel good about it. Now, don't get me wrong, these wicks are going right into some clear resistance levels. And this could be the top here. But typically, I like to see three tops, right? I, I look for one, two, three, and then the move down, right? The, the rising wedge you know always has a three top so I like I'd like to see that no guarantees that we get it but for sure 
I would be on the short side with eight. We just got a $5 super chat from Matt saying, what do you think of Pokeswap for the next bull market, sir? So PSWAP market cap currently is $2 million, down 99.9% .9 from its all-time high at 88 cents, currently trading for 0 0.0005 cents. Now this thing, I did have high hopes for it. Sora Mitsu. Sora, how is Sora doing? Pokeswap and Sora are connected. I know Sora is down pretty bad too. XOR. Uh, it's three cents. You know, this thing was multiple hundreds of dollars. So, ah, man, it, it's pure speculation, Matt. It really is pure speculation. Amster Camp says, "Thanks, Connor. As always, appreciate your time and wisdom. Over fifty percent through your course. Thank you, Amster Cam. I appreciate your support. Anyways, back to the question on PokeSwap. Pure speculation. Um." Now the, it, it didn't really do too, too well off the gate. No Polkadot project did super well last bull market. I hope that turns around. I hope that this next bull market, the Polkadot projects, the, the ecosystem projects do much better. They theoretically should because everything should be working properly by the time 2024 rolls around. Look, this thing's down in the dumps. Um... I don't know how it's going to do next bull market. I hope it does well so I can recoup some of my investment. For anybody watching and has no idea, I did invest in the pre-sale of this project, PokeSwap. Got access to that one at the height of the bull market. And my investment in it is gone. It's at zero, basically. So down just as bad as everybody else. Um, will it do well? I don't know. Pure speculation. Space Boy and Kitty says, thoughts on Bitcoin Cash, Rune, and Dot. Let's take a look at these, and then we're going to start kind of wrapping it up. Been going for a while, hour and 38 minutes. BCH. Hasn't done a lot at all. If you guys recall, I was super bullish on it back here. With the move up to 125. Caught this pump perfectly. Then FTX collapsed. Uh, no, here we go. I caught this move up to 125 perfectly. Then FTX collapsed. And it has regained ground since. As you guys see, it is currently a red week and month for BCH. All right, you go to the weekly chart, it's red. So, just chop, 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 chop is all I'm seeing here. All I see is chop, to be completely fair with you. And potentially you can draw something like that. Or just move this over. And we're at that line now. I see nothing that intrigues me on this chart personally. Just ch there's nothing here. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Let's look at dot. So dot here gave us this little pump up to 570, never made it to 6. But a decent move nonetheless off of the end of the green here. A nice 5%er. 
And again, telltale signs of a breakdown were there if you were paying attention, right? Price sweeping the highs, yet losing strength at the same exact time. The signs are always there, folks. Your bearish divergence is gonna be the first thing you'll notice to catch a breakdown, right? Uh, but yeah, dot here coming to a good point, right? It's coming into this demand level, right? It's already tested it, and it's also coming to retest this trend line again. So this thing looks like it wants to bounce. What we should look for now is some kind of the opposite of up here. We want to look for, yeah, we have it. Bingo. All right, we do have price getting stronger while it's making lower lows. This is a telltale sign that we're going to see a nice reversal out of here. So dot. Also, we always need multiple reasons to enter into a trade. If you only have one reason to enter into a trade, you're doing it totally wrong. We need multiple confluence multiple reasons to be bullish or bearish on something we do have that with dot okay we have a demand zone we have clear bullish divergence and we have continuous higher lows trend up higher highs this all points towards a move up all right so bitcoin cash you know i couldn't see anything there because there really wasn't anything but when there's something there we'll be able to spot it and we have something here on dot so I would definitely pay more attention to DOT than BCH. If you wanted to potentially play this one, again, not really the best time to be actively entering into something, but you only have a less than a 2% risk, right? If you put your stop below this wick, uh, back up to resistance over here near, near the weekly open, you have yourselves a three to one. This is actually a five to one. So small risk, high reward, it's there. Dot, thank you for bringing to my attention, Space Boy and Kitty. Last one, Thorchain Rune. See that short did pretty decent there. Nine percent. And with Rune, we do need to be a little bit careful from what I am seeing here on the charts. First of all, notice at one of my resistance lines, supplies, supply zones, all right, first reason, second reason, we will confirm if it's there, but we have three consecutive highs in a row, higher highs, Yep, this is looking like it's a breakdown city on Thorchain. Okay, losing strength while it's making higher highs in a resistance level. This is what's known as a rising wedge, folks. Now, depending on how you draw your lines, uh, it's going to look something like this. It's already starting to break down. Measly 3% so far, realistically. This thing can come down to 130 and possibly even down here to 120 to the 125 zone. And if it did that, you know, you're looking at a 10% move from current price. So these are always best to catch at the exact top. Sometimes we're not able to catch them at the exact top, so we need to enter a little bit later. So our risk here is not horrible, only 3.6%. And if we were looking to this level first, it is a 1.3 to 1. That's why we really need to be able to enter higher on this. It would instantly bump us up to like a 3 to 1. But where current price is to 127, you have a 2.5 to 1, which is decent. So a lot of differing altcoins here at the end of the stream if you guys recall earlier we looked at a lot of altcoins that all had the same market structure but dot rune and bitcoin cash all very different here and this is what i am seeing we'll see how it plays out
Let's see, Crypto Panda in regards to ALBT Alliance block saying, the hack took place on a third party exchange, not the ALBT server, ALBT in partnership with London Stock Exchange. Interesting. Good to know, thanks for that info. Matt says, just bought 10 mil P-Swap just in case. Love it. Hey man, you gotta risk it to get the biscuit. No risk, no reward. If that goes up a little bit. You will be laughing, my friend. Two million dollar market cap. Ten mil coins currently costs. Five point four K. Decent sized bag. You don't need much to multiply that five point four K, so Matt, respect. Respect to you, my friend. Tinson says, Sora meets you is Australian, right? With Japanese name, think we got scammed big time. <laughs> Stuff, they, that guy, that guy, I remember watching all of his videos and stuff. I don't know. He seemed good at the time. Maybe he was just doing, working his marketing magic. Let's see. Ulrika says, hi, Connor. I bought my first Bitcoin in 2020 just holding. I'm starting to trade slowly now. There are some interesting new coins on Binance, for example, CTXC. What do you think the way it moves? Thanks. CTXC, Cortex. Up 22% on the day. So this one's actually been around since 2018. Cortex, yeah, something like this. I don't trust it. Like, who's buying this thing to make it to make it go up a hundred and two hundred percent? Who the heck is buying this thing to make it do that? Somebody must know something. So let's map out some levels on this chart. Always need that initial exchange candle opening. Very important. Another example of bullish divergence playing out. It's always there. It's always, always, always there. Price, lower lows, RSI, higher lows. It's always there. And that's your first indicator to tell you something's about to happen. Uh, obviously played out at this point. Look at the volume here. Okay, so what you wanna do after a pump like this is you want to wait for the, it's already starting to form. Notice, huge volume, low volume. This is called the consolidation volume. This chart looks like it wants to continue, right? We had the first pump here back on the 5th of December, small little one. Look at the volume on the pump, look at the volume on the consolidation, all right? And then what happens, explosion. Now this could be it, but we wanna continue to watch for this consolidation volume. And basically we just wanna play the pattern. We want to play the pattern here, All right? This is a bit of a falling wedge starting to break. You can see the volume increasing. This could be it. This could be the, the one. Um, Yeah, this, this could for sure be it. And what we want to do basically, we want to look for this third pump. We want to look for the RSI to be low so we can short it. I would not buy it. I would look to short it basically when I have that confirmation with multiple layers of confluence to look to enter that short. But the way it moves right now, it's hot. 
it's certainly hot something's happening with the volume and I would look for that final pump and to short it that's my plan I, I don't want to buy it after it's pumped so high you're welcome hope that helps all right guys we've been going for an hour and 50 minutes thank you so much for your support throughout the live stream we currently have 49 viewers and 58 likes so I like that ratio if you're watching right now and you have not yet liked the live stream what are you waiting for smash that like button right now show some support for your boys smash up that like button if you're not subscribed to the channel already smash that subscribe button as well turn on all the notifications so that you don't miss any future videos this was a jam-packed live stream. We have a huge week coming up with the FOMC, with the CPI. Big week. Get ready for it. All right. I'll see all. I'll see all of you very soon, right here at Crypto Empire. Any questions? Join my free Telegram group. Check out my website, CryptoEmpireCo.io, for more information about becoming a premium member right here at Crypto Empire. This was the slowest week in the market right nothing happened this past week it was a good week to not look at charts but we're going to get some volatility this week so you better strap in that seat belt and get ready for a wild ride i'm looking forward to it thank you all for being here at crypto empire hope you enjoyed the live stream we stream every single sunday sometimes we do emergency streams throughout the week as well as regular content throughout the week so again if you're not already subscribed to the channel go ahead right now and smash the subscribe button down below and turn on all the notifications so you don't miss any future videos my name is Connor from Crypto Empire, aka the Crypto Emperor, and I'm